Whoa, what is up everybody? So today we're gonna talk about cooking because everybody loves a good meal. If it's at home, if it's out with their friends, but especially when you're out in the woods, when you're camping or hiking or just spending a day out, a good meal can set that trip apart from every other single trip you've ever been on. I mean, I love to eat, so I'm super excited about this one. So my name is Dan Wowak, Yuko Brand Ambassador, owner of Coal Cracker Bushcraft and Appalachian Bushman School, where we teach survival skills, bushcraft skills, and a little bit of everything in between related to the outdoors. Now what I'm gonna teach you today are three wilderness cook systems that are easy to make when you're out on the trail. In case you forget, you know, that real nice Yuko flat pack we all love so much, or maybe you took your food along and when you get there and you decide you're gonna cook, you think, how do I grill this or how do I, hang my pot or what do I do? What do I do? Well, Dan's here to help you. So I'm gonna show you these three systems. They're easy, they're simple, you're gonna remember them and next time you're out, you're gonna love it. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, so system number one has to do with boiling or cooking a stew in a pot with a bale over the campfire. Sticking the pot right down into the embers is usually a no-no. It's gonna get just too hot and whatever's inside is gonna burn on the bottom and you, you're on and off, on and off with it. So I'm gonna show you a really easy way. So for now, we don't need that. But what we do need is we need three branches. Now these branches, they need to be about chest height, they're not too much higher, not too much shorter. Chest height is gonna be good, and uh, about thumb width. And then you're also gonna need a little bit of rope, and then just a little bit of know-how, and that's where I come into play. So let's uh, show you how to tie this thing up. It's so simple, it's so easy, you're gonna love this. Okay, so here's how this works. We have our three sticks together. Just clump them together. It um, doesn't have to be anything special. The top of the sticks are here, bottom of the sticks are down there. Um, you wanna just make sure the bottom of the sticks, which are down this way, are all even on the bottom. Then we're gonna come from the top about a foot down and we're gonna take the line, the cordage or rope that we have, and we're simply just gonna wrap it around the sticks, okay? It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just wrap it around. It should look like there's two wraps of string around all of the posts. Then you're gonna just simply tie a knot. Now, you don't wanna tie this super tight. I don't wanna pull this tight to bind all this up. That's gonna happen in the next step. So I'm just gonna tie this knot, knot that the knot is tight, but my wraps are nice and loose loose on there. So you can see that it's loose, just like that. That's all we're looking for at this point. Let the rest of the rope hang. That's important too. All right, now here's where all the magic happens. I'm gonna take one of those sticks and I'm literally just going to spin it around. So I'm just gonna flip it over. You should, as you're doing this, start to feel some tension build up, okay? Flip that one stick around, and now, my friends, you have made yourself a tripod. Okay, so that long end of the string that I said, make sure you keep hanging it there. Just pick up a stick, make sure it's not gonna break, and that it's a little bit robust, but you can see what size I picked here. And then simply tie this on. I don't really care how you tie this thing on. If you know any kind of really awesome knots like a clove hitch, that'll work absolutely perfect. If not, just, I don't know, figure a way to tie it on and it's gonna work fine for you. So once you get that knot in place, what you're doing is you're creating yourself a toggle. Okay, so I have that thing in place now, and then the rest of that rope that's underneath it, I can just take my knife and I can really quickly just cut that away. Now here's the best part. Once you get your um, stew or your container or whatever you got um, and you have everything in it, you can really easily just put that toggle through the bale and it will hold in place. Now we have our pot suspended over our campfire and we can make really quick, easy adjustments with this. And those adjustments work really easily by opening up the legs of the tripod to lower our kettle, or we can raise it up really easily by just closing the legs in. That's gonna raise our kettle up better. So, we have a ton of adjustability, like a ton, a ton, a ton of adjustability with this thing. We can get the uh, exact amount of heat that we want on it, and it's just like cooking at home on your stove. You turn it to low, to high, or uh, burn. So, now you got total control. Tripod, check. 
Okay, so the next thing that you might deal with when you're out there is you have this big hunk of meat, like a big hunk of beef or maybe a chicken, and you wanna cook it. But what you really quickly realize that once you place it on a stick and you try to cook it by rotating it, you realize that the meat just slides around or the chicken just slides around on that meat and you just can't cook it. So you're trying this balancing act of getting it to stay and then it just, it starts cooking and it slides. The heavy par portion slides. So it's just like, it's literally just rotating on here like, like a rotisserie, right? So let's just make a rotisserie and say the hell with that stick. All right, so the first part of the rotisserie is going to be the stick that we skewer the meat or the chicken or whatever it may be with. So here's my stick. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Dan, you just had a stick and it was spinning. I split this stick. So this split stick is going to act as a pinching device, not only to skewer the meat, but also to pinch the meat. It's not going to allow it to slide around. Okay, so as you can see now, it's not moving. And then I can just take this in and tie it down with some rope. Now it's pinched, so I can slowly rotate this thing. Okay, get the wood shavings out of it. But I can slowly rotate this thing and not have it rotating on an axis point. It's gonna stay exactly where I want it, exactly how I need it. But what about, what do we do now? We're not just gonna hold this thing. It gets better. So the back side of that stick, what you want to do is you want to cut it into a triangle type shape. This triangle type shape is going to help us in a little bit, but we need another part. Well, actually two other parts. Just cut the triangle and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so we have our fire started. Of course, we'd want to build that up a little bit more. Low and slow is the best way to cook like this. But what I've done is I went ahead and I added some Y branches two of them into the ground. So these Y branches are just uprights that are gonna hold our rotisserie in place when we cook. So really easily now, I can rotate this thing as needed. Now, remember that um, triangle we made on the back? This is why we need it. That triangle is gonna lay into this Y branch as I cook. So what happens is, as I rotate this, different parts of the triangle lay into this Y of the branch, okay? So I can rotate that and find all those different angles in order to cook this beautiful hunk of meat. So we got our tripod, we can hang our pots or kettles and we can cook with very precise heat over that. And then we also just talked about making that rotisserie. That way we can rotisserie chickens or meat over the campfire without just cooking one side way too much. But what about if neither of those work and we need to grill something? Say we catch a nice trout in a stream or we have a steak along with us or a pork chop or we wanna grill some vegetables, but we don't have a grill top. We can make a grill easy breezy like super simple okay now with this what i have done is i went ahead and i put y branches yet again four of them in each corner of my fire okay then i'm going to take two straight sticks and i'm going to lay them across from branch to branch very similar to how we set up the rotisserie okay we just want to make sure they're all nice and level and even it's going to help us with this, so let's get this one up a little bit. All right, so we got that all leveled out. Now you might be thinking, what is happening? Well, you're gonna take some green branches. So green wood, you don't wanna use dry wood for this, it'll hold up better. And we're gonna just lay that across the top of our fire. Now what we're creating is a grill top. So just like that, we created a woodland grill. And there you have it, three woodland cook systems for your cooking pleasure. I guarantee utilizing these things is gonna make your camping and outdoor experiences just that much better. So definitely give them a shot. Now, a couple things to remember with this. You don't have to go and cut live trees for all of these cook systems. Many times you can find downed trees in the forest that you just have to break some of the branches off, specifically for the tripod and the rotisserie. Now the grill itself, those cross pieces, they should be green branches so they don't burn. And the other thing with the grill top is that you might at time have to, as you cook, replace some of those cross members if they start to burn a little bit. You don't wanna lose your dinner down in the fire, 
but that grill works great for, like I said, fish or anything else. So you can literally cook all different types of things out here with just a little bit of ingenuity, and that is three ways. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Also check out all the cool gear over at yukogear.com. And um, as I always say, until the next video, stay in the woods.